We continue with our series here, The Greatest Success Habits on Health. And I fair compare even for us to start the year with this great habit. Uh, we said a habit is a powerful gift from God to us. Habit. Uh, something happened this morning quickly. My wife drew my attention to it. Uh, in our closet or in our is it bathroom or something, we have two faucet. My own, her own here, a little bit big. And the toothpaste is always here. Anytime she wants to take the toothpaste, she has to come to my side to take it. Last night I said, this toothpaste is, is finishing. I believe, no, it's not finishing. We need a replacement. He said the replacement is there. She now told me, he said, don't throw it away. I said, why? He said, because there are, you know, we still have plenty there. I said, okay, that's your home. I put it on her side. And I took the, the new one. So this morning when she woke up, I was already dressing. She came to my side. <laughs> as soon as she came to my side, she said, oh, habit, you know. She said, oh, my home is there. Because she's always coming to this side to take the toothpaste. She didn't know that her home is on this side. So she just came around. So as as soon as she was about to take it, she said, oh, habit, I'm used to this thing. I'm used to this thing. So she has to return back, even to go and take what belongs to her. So we are creators of habit. Can I hear your amen? amen. Habit is a powerful gift from God to us. So to many people, when we talk of habit, they think of bad habits. No, not every habit is bad. You coming to church, is it a bad habit or good habit? You going to work every work day, is it good or bad habit? So you have to understand that. So we now say you can create good habits the same way you will create or you create bad habits. And we began to see something. We said, number one, Jesus had a habit of attending worship services. We saw that one in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 16. It's just a recap. Luke chapter 1, I mean chapter 4, verse 16. He said, so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and he entered in the synagogue as, his, as was his custom. It was his custom to attend services in the synagogue. We saw in the life of the man David, it has become his habit to pray three times a day. Psalm 55, verse 17. And also to praise seven times a day. Three times a day, he pray. Psalm 55, verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray. And cried out, and he shall hear my voice. May the Lord hear your voice. Amen. And also, the same man David, seven times in a day, he prays. Psalm 119, verse 164. Psalm 119, verse 164. Seven times a day, I praise you because of your righteous judgment. It has become is happy. Today, let's look at the man called Daniel in that habit area. The man Daniel had a habit of praying three times a day. Let's go there. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Let's take it from verse 1. I will eat and run, okay? Or skip some passages. From verse 1, this particular story, because in verse 3 of that scripture, the Bible says, then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satrap because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. 
Let's pick it up from verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps. It was like an American nation that has 50 states. 50 states of the, in the union. And during the time of Dairos, the king of Persia, the king of Mate, they had what we call 127 provinces that you can refer to 127 states. Of course, he can't just govern just like that without the assistance of the governors, the satraps, the mayor, like you have in the United States of America. So, this man, he said, it pleased Dairot to set over the kingdom, 127 satraps, call them governor, to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satrap might give account to them so that they might, I mean, so that the king will suffer no loss. And in the process, Daniel distinguished himself. You will dis, you'll be distinguished in Jesus' name. So, what are we saying? In this year of new dawn or the dawning of a new day, my God will promote you mightily. But make no mistake about this. Like Mama Dejuma said some time ago, which is a very, very powerful and valid point. Some people will not be happy because you are happy. Never forget that. If you are happy and you think that everybody is just relating joy, you know, jumping with you, and they, are, they love, your, you know, they love your, your, your happiness, they love your promotion, you better, <laughs> you better change your mind. I am not saying you should suspect people. No, 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 no. Just make sure you focus on your God and watch your back. Because when God begins to promote you, some people will not like it. They will tell you, are you the only one? What is he doing that somebody has not done before? And in the bid of wanting to undo you, some of them can go into any length. May the Lord give us victory over our enemies. So, the governor of us fall. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find no charge of fault because he was what? Well, faithful. They did everything possible. Let us look at him. Let's criticize him. Let's, let's check all his activity. Maybe he's embezzling some money. Maybe some people are, maybe he's just cutting corner. You know what I'm talking about. But they couldn't find anything. When your enemy will be looking for something against you, they will never find anything. Look at what Jesus said. He said, the prince of this world came to me, but he found nothing that belongs to him in me. That's the reason why you need to keep checking yourself. If there is anything that is anti-God in you, you better drop it. Because the enemy may capitalize on that single thing to nail you, but the enemy will not find you. That amen is not born again. So verse 5. Then this man said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. In your place of work, do people know you to be a born again Christian? Can they say, we know that man is a born again Christian? We know that sister is a born again Christian. He's a servant of God. He won't mix up with us when it comes to crooked way of doing things. His way is straight and is faithful. In fact, he preaches to us. What are they saying about you? They say, okay, we know what to do. So far, we cannot find anything against him concerning his job. We know he's a servant of God. We know he's a man of God. We know 
we know we will find something against him concerning the law of his God. But they will fail. Verse 6. So this governors, look at the conspiracy from the pit of hell. These governors, three of them, or two of them, and 127 satraps, call them mayors, call them ministers, thrown before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. Nobody lives forever except God. Your highness, live forever. It's just political statement. Have you ever seen somebody who lived, who lived forever? King Darius, you know where you are now. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors, look at the big conspiracy, have consulted together to establish a royal status and to make a firm decree that whoever petition any god, G-O-D, small, low, I mean, lower case, any god or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lion. Can you see that? Temptation to deny God will come at your place of work. Temptation to compromise will come at your place of work. Like I always tell you, temptation is not a sin. But to fall into temptation, that is where the problem lies. Everyone will face temptation in one way or the other. But your solidity in God. Somebody say my solidity. My, your firm foundation in God is what we see you through. If your foundation in God is not strong, let me tell you something. There is tendency for you to compromise. But as the Lord liveth, none of us will compromise. If temptation happens to be a sin, Jesus will have committed sin, but he never. Temptation came to Christ. How many times? Three times. The one they recorded for us, just as an example. Remember also, another one they didn't record. When it was about time for Jesus to go to the cross, there was a temptation. Because nobody wants to die. Except, you know, the reason why death is good for Christians, we say we don't die, but we sleep, is because Jesus has conquered the death for us. But before that time, nobody wants to all die because death has things. You understand what I'm talking about? He faced that. He said, Lord, take this away from me. But... Not my will, but let your will be done. That's a temptation. But his firm foundation, somebody say his firm foundation, saw him through. So, temptation is not a sin. And many of you now, you are going through some temptation. Ability to let go or ability to stand for God. It may be in the area of your finances. You don't have any money and let it be known to you and there are bills piling up and you are in a position, the company money is in your care. Or somebody kept some money aside and you have the access to it and if you take it, nobody will even know. But the Spirit of God is saying, that is not your money. Don't take it. But God, you know that I have this bill to pay. Somebody say temptation. You've been coming to the church. Oh, Lord, when is my wife coming? I'm about, I want to get married. This loneliness is too much. I want to get married. But no lady wants to marry you. Or you don't see anyone in the church. Or you are a lady. 
temptation we come to settle down for second class. Somebody say, don't give in. Temptation to, you know, to compromise your Christianity or your Christian faith we come. After all, we are going to get married. After all, our marriage is going, we're going to get married this year. What is stopping us from sleeping together? After all, we're going to be husband and wife. Temptation will come. Will you be impossible to still stand to God and to still stand for God and say, no, I'm not going to compromise. The grace never to compromise, receive it in the name of Jesus. Look at that. They conspire together, and whoever, whoever call on any other God except you, Dairos, we will send them even to the den of lion. But one thing you need to know about temptation, it's not going to last for long. Somebody say it has an expiry date. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Temptation. But look at it. Now, verse 8. O king, I mean, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the maids and pasha, which does not alter. I don't know what this king is thinking. What did he do? Therefore, verse 9. King Dario sign the writing decree. But you remember we are talking about habits. Your foundation in God. Your solidity in the things of God. Look at verse 10. And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his window open. Everybody say open. He wasn't doing it in the secret. With his window open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees. How many times? Three times. That day. Three times that day. Now look at the next statement. And he prayed and he gave thanks before his God, not before Dairos. He dared them. But do you think this is just jump on Daniel? Just anyhow. No. Everyone say no. Look at the last statement now. Before his God has was his custom since war holiday. As he was custom, it has become his habit. Since holiday. That has been his custom, habit. Somebody say habit. Say it louder. Habit since holiday. And let it be known to you, this man was a prince in the land of Judah before he was taken as a captive to the land of Babylon. Medio Partial Empire conquered Babylon and they conquered him too. He was a slave in Babylon. Then now he was also a slave in Mates and in Partial Kingdom. But he never denied his God. Things that will make us to deny God will never happen to any of us. But our foundation has to be solid. Do you have foundation in God? That's the question. And for us to succeed... As a businessman, as a businesswoman, as a career man, career woman, as a professional, let it be known to you, you can have what we call good success outside God. That's the reason why we say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So if your foundation is so solid, no matter what the enemy throw at you, you will always come out victoriously. You know the story of Daniel. They threw him into the den of lion. And you know lion happens to be ferocious, especially when they are angry. But the God Daniel was serving, as they threw him into the den, the Holy Spirit has gone ahead. Lion, this is not the kind of who touch not his coming. 
There are people who are touched now. May you be one of them in the name of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't just jump on people. It has to be cultivated. Are you following what I'm talking about? It has to be built inside of you as a resource of intake. We're going to get there, but not today. Write this thing down, it will help you. It will help you. What champions, some of you may know it before, what champions do daily is what losers are only willing to do occasionally. What champions, those who will have their foundation in God, what they are doing daily is what people who do not have foundation in God do occasionally. They don't compromise the word of God. They don't compromise what God is saying. They are not the only, they are not the people that come to church one day on a, in a week. And when they are coming, they come to church on a Sunday, they pick and choose. This one is good for me, let me accept it. The one pastor is just saying his own. They don't build confidence in God like that. Are you following what I'm talking about? They don't build confidence in God like that. So it has to be daily. Somebody say daily. Your daily routine must be in the word of God. Your daily routine must be in prayer. God force. Somebody say God force. Say it louder. So what champions do daily is what loser. losers are only willing to do occasionally. Number two. The secret of your future is in what you do daily. The secret of your future is what you do or daily. You may not know little, little children that are in church today. It may be as if the parents compel them. You know, we're going to church today or something, something, something. You may be thinking that they are not getting anything, but it's getting in. Are you following what I'm talking about? You'll be surprised the day they are going to rehearse it for you. And anytime you are trying to compromise, they know also. The reason why children have problems is because we don't know which one. Because mommy is like this today and like that tomorrow. But if mommy is constant, you will see constant children. Can I hear your email? The same thing happened to that. We need to understand. Our children are watching us. If there is any challenge, who do we call? Is that the time to shout on mommy? Is that the time to, sh to yell on daddy? No. No. We want to know whether we can trust this God or not. Somebody say amen to that. The secret of your future is in what you do daily. Check what you do daily. That has become constant in your life. It is the secret of your future. If you take this word of God, I believe God is the only source I have. I must seek him daily, not occasionally. I must pray. I must communicate to him daily. Not when I have challenges. No, not when the problem is knocking. No, 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 no. It has become part and parcel of me. I and the father, we have a relationship. It will determine what your future will be. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be well added unto you. Number three, what you are doing on a daily basis is what determines what you will become permanently. I come again. What you are doing on a daily basis is determined by what you will become permanently. What are you doing? If your job is your priority, does he have a future? Only God knows. If your family happens to be your number one priorities, I've seen some people before. Oh, my family, my family. There is nothing wrong in taking care of your family. We have to. But you can abandon responsibility of taking, taking care of your family if you take care of your relationship with God first. God must be number one on everything. Not your family, not your wife, not your husband, not your children, not your job, not your business. Somebody say God first. When somebody else takes the place of God, 
you are on your way to bankruptcy and none of us will be bankrupt. I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. I was telling a couple yesterday who came to visit me in my office after the prayer and fasting yesterday. I said, by the grace of God, this August will make it for the three years that I've been following God. I have never seen anyone who follow God, who does what he commands and regret it. God is a lifter. God is a lifter. God is a lifter. I've been here now. I'm poor. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor you see him begging bread. If you want a colorful tomorrow, if you want a colorful future for yourself, for your family, for your business, for your career, for your job, you better embrace God as number one. Somebody say number one. Because without God, there is no future. Is the only one who was, who is, and who is to come. Nobody lives forever. The, the, uh, the future of that, your family, of your life, of your business, of your career, is not in the hand of anyone. It's in the hand of God and your hand. And let me tell you something. Your relationship with God will determine what he delivers to you. When you see a man, oh, it's myself, my family, my family for, I can't allow anybody, anything to come in between my family. Watch out later. At the end of the day, that family will crumble. Our home will not crumble. Build your life, your family, your business, your career on God. Are you following what I'm talking about? When God becomes number one, you will have the best of family. When God becomes number one, you will have the best of your career. You will have the best, the best, the best, the best. Everybody say the best. In the holidays of this ministry, we have some visitors. <laughs> and they said they have to return back to where they are coming from on a Sunday morning. I laugh. It wasn't the day of Uber. It will have been easy that day if it is this day. I said, you are going to miss that flight. I told them, I said, if you are coming to my house, it's a law. On Sunday morning, you must follow me to church. It's a choice. But for me to say, I'm taking you to the airport on a Sunday morning, God forbid that's not the place I'm supposed to be. That's me. I can't imagine myself, except by divine instruction, on a Sunday morning, for me to stay at home. No. It's not possible. It's not, and it will never be. What is your priority in life? Can I tell you, because this is empowerment service, the success you are looking for is in the hand of God. How many of you believe that? The one who has been managing the affairs of the world since the world began, and he has never failed once. Will it not be important to manage your little life? Since he created the world, light, I mean, you know, sun has been at the right time, Moon has been at the right time. Stars has been at the right time. Moon wing come out in the day. He manages the world perfectly. He said, I will give you success. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth, but you must meditate in it day and night that you may observe what is written in it. And then, in the process, you have good success. Good success is a portion in Jesus' name. Help me to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor... God first. As you start your journey this year, in your business, in your career, please, God must be number one. God must be, you know, I'm too busy, I'm too this, I'm too that, I can't come to church, I can't study my Bible, I can't pray. In fact, I like to pray, but I don't have the time. Everybody say create time. Create time. That is the main domain. Your relationship with God. Number four. Your success in life is therefore determined by the habit you develop. That's, it. That's, it. That's the crown of the whole matter. Your success in life is therefore determined by the habit you 
develop. By the habit you develop. With all humility to the glory of God, I develop that habit and I'm growing in it daily. Nobody comes between me and God. Nobody. I've told you the story before. I have a school fees to pay. And they said, the fellow who has the money, we should come and beg her on Sunday morning. I said, God forbid. God forbid. I can't, because my, my understanding is that if I choose to beg man, when I'm supposed to be begging God, <laughs> it means that throughout that year, except if God has mercy on me, I will be at the mercy of man. A man can be difficult to trust. I better trust God. If this money will not be paid by God, don't let it be paid. And then, when they were begging her, she now said, the one that you are begging for, where is he? They couldn't find me. I was in the presence of God. So, she said, because of my mom, she released the money. So now, guess the one that they are helping. They were all tongue-lashing me. I said, hey, woman, you are not giving me this money to buy rice and beans. You are investing in my future. I will pay back. Oh, my God, we pay back. Our children are saying, you know, she has a set of twins, and the two of them are getting married the same day. And my mom told me about it. And I sent her 15,000 naira of the time. How much was the money she loaned me? 153. 153 naira. 15,000 naira came in. And she was fumbly. Is that all she's going to send to me? I told, I said, Mommy, tell her that she should remove her 153, 153 naira. She sent me my, my change. Out of 15,000. Didn't I do well? No bank would give her that kind of interest. Because I choose to serve God. God never allowed me to be ashamed. All your days, you will never know shame. What is the theme of this man? Huh? I have finally entered into what? A shame-free era of life. You will never know shame again. I have entered into what? A shame-free life. The way to that lifestyle is what I'm teaching you today. Can I hear your amen? amen? As a believer, as we begin to round up, who desire to succeed in life, the greatest success habit, everyone said the greatest. The greatest success habit you can develop is a daily fellowship with God in his world and in prayer. The greatest success habit you can develop is your daily fellowship. Everyone say daily fellowship. Daily fellowship with God in prayer and in his word. In prayer and in his word. I don't care how busy you are. Now, how, why didn't I care? Can, can, can you say you are too busy? You have not eaten in three days and you are not fasting. And you are still as strong as ever. People don't get busy to eat food. Why are you too busy to eat the spiritual food that way that will make you strong? People don't get busy <laughs> from not going to, to the restroom. If you are pressed now, you say, I'm going to suspend it now. Are you following what I'm talking about? Because I'm too busy. You know you're on your way to the grave. There are some things you are not too busy in doing. No matter how busy you may be, let this one be number one. Everybody say number one. The greatest habit of your life. Let it be your fellowship. And this fellowship, I'm not saying it could take 10, 10 hours. It can be just 30 minutes. It can be just one hour. As the Lord gives you the opportunity, Come on, develop it. Somebody say, develop it. It's your greatest habit. It's your greatest habit. Why that? 
Let's look at some scripture and we close today. We continue next week. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 48. Why must you develop this greatest habit of fellowshipping with God? Isaiah chapter 48 from verse 17. Let's read what the Bible says. Isaiah, he said, Thus says the Lord, in that fellowship with God, prayer and in studying of the war. He said, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God. Who is the Lord your God? Say him. What will he do? Who teaches you to do what? To profit. In fellowshipping with God, he teaches what they cannot teach you in business school. He teaches you the secret how to succeed in your personal life. How to succeed in your career, in your profession. How to take that business to the next level. You don't know what you are missing by not fellowshipping with God. Who teaches you to do what? To profit. Who leads you by the way you should go? That's God. Hear this. In Proverbs chapter 16, I believe verse 25, he said there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. If God did not teach you or does not teach you the way to profit and the way to go, there may be some ways that look so pretty well that, hey, this is a way to succeed. This is a way to break through. This is a way to take your business, your career to the next level. If God is not there, hmm? it leads to the you know, disappointment. That's the reason why many people fear, I mean, you know, many people face disappointment because God is not there. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on, on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will all direct your path. There is a way. Okay, now let's continue from that Isaiah. Who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way to go. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. Come on, let's go to verse 18 of that scripture. You are delaying me. Who teaches you the way? Okay, verse 8 says, Oh, that you have heeded my commandment. Somebody say, I will heed. Then your peace will have been like a river. Do you want peace in your family? Do you want peace in your business, in your career? This is the way. Somebody say, listen. Say it, say listen. Then your peace will have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Continue to, 18, to 19. He said your descender also will have been like the sun and the offspring of your body, like the grain of sun. His name will, have, will not have been cut off. Continue, nor destroyed from before me. Continue. Look at it. He said go forth from Babylon. Babylon is the system of the world. Don't run your business like the people of the world. Don't run your business with something that is common. I have an uncommon secret to offer to you. Flee from the Chaldeans with the voice of singing. Come on now. Declare, proclaim this. Utter it to the hand of the earth. Say, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. May the Lord redeem you. One more scripture. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verses 11 to 16. Look at what the Bible has to say there. Don't do business like the people of the world. Look at it. It said your word. Everybody say your word. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Continue to 16. Blessed are you, O Lord. What happened? Teach me your status. With my lips, I have declared all the judgment of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimony as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precept and contemplate your way. Verse 16, I will delight. Somebody say, I will delight. 
I will delight myself in your status. I will not forget your war. Rise up on your feet today. Please, when you are in the presence of God, either you are praying or you are studying his war, open your heart, your spiritual heart. Ask him question. Lord, what is the way to go? As you are singing, worshiping, as you are praying, either in the spirit or you are praying in understanding, pay close attention to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. At that time, he may be talking to you about your business. Write it down. Stop at that moment and write it down. As you are studying the word of God, most of the time, not most of the time, all the time, most most of the things we do in this tour is by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let it be known to you. That's what many people don't know, and I don't care whether they know it or not. No, stop that. No, that's what we are going to do. Because by the grace of God, I'm the set man he puts. I must be in tune with God at all times. The same way you must be in tune with God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, who are they? They are the sons of God. But many of us are too carnal. We can't pick the voice of God, but from today, God will be speaking to you clearly. And you'll be picking the signal clearly. And the grace to obey, receive it in the name of Jesus. Final scripture for the day. Psalm 32, verse 8. Go home with this. And we close. Psalm 32, verse 8. Go home with this. Come on. Look at what the Bible says. Read it with me. One, two, go, everybody. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Continue verse 9. He said, do not be like the horse or like the moon, which have no understanding, which must be a nest with beads and bridle. I will be the one. If there is something you are going home with today, I will teach you. I will teach you. I will teach you. I will teach you. That is what you had. Now instruction comes in. Lord, as you are teaching me, the grace to obey, I receive in Jesus' name. Have you gotten something today? That business will see the kind of profit you have never seen before this year. That promotion you are trusting God for in your business, in your career, in your profession, this is the year it will become a reality. You will not need to struggle any longer. When the world are saying there is a casting down, your testimony, my testimony, our testimony will be what? There is a lifting up. Because there is a way God is asking us to follow. And that is the way we are following. Somebody say amen to that. I tell you something, peace awaits you this year. Prosperity awaits you this year. Success awaits you this year. Somebody say, I will go for God. Lift him higher and celebrate him.